CS greetings, CS goers. I'm Xtremes. Thank you for joining me. So anyway, um, on to the topic at hand. E-League. No, that's not what it says in the title, of course. But uh, the E-League final was amazing. That Astralis win and the highest ever viewership uh, in CSGO history for a major final. 1.6 million total across TV and online platforms. Amazing. Such a great game. Probably the best final ever as well. Um, if you look at um, the quality of the game itself, I mean, it was just incredible. You've got to go back and look at it. Um, if you haven't watched the VOD, I encourage you to do so. So I was going to do a vid about uh, the, the current rosters, but I do believe that you, my audience, can read. Um, if you couldn't, you wouldn't be here, I would assume. Well, if your parents don't know about it, maybe you should uh, involve them in this if you can't read and you are here. Either way, terrible jokes, that's what I do. So I assume you can read, so therefore I'm not going to insult your intelligence by reading the rosters back to you. I mean, I could make some speculation about how good people are, but uh, who knows? Telcom doesn't really give us any... Um, statistics we can go off ESEA but nobody really plays ESEA uh, anymore so you can't really tell anything about the individual players we can only look at last season so it's not really possible without some serious thumb sucking and guessing and uh, I don't really want to guess so the topic at hand is uh, well Telcom DGL Masters itself as a um, earning proposition Telcom DGL Masters is in the eyes of most esports fans the pinnacle of competition in South Africa they certainly were the pioneers and have done a lot to grow esports in South Africa. And they should be applauded for their achievements in doing so in lending legitimacy to the sport that we love. Whether it be Counter-Strike or Dota or League of Legends or Quake or whatever it was, you know, they blazed the trail. They were the trailblazers. Um, they currently offer a, a 1 million rand prize pool, as they did last year, and uh, which seems on the surface to be a massive prize pool. It's a big, you know, big uh, portion of money, big chunk of, big chunk of money, of course. And... Uh, you only do get your cut of that after a year's worth of largely ir irrelevant online play. I mean, there are some lands, but uh, what actually determines the grand prize is the actual land finals that were at Rage last year and traditionally are there. We don't know where it'll be this year, but I'm assuming it'll be somewhere similar. But anyway, um, I always favor the lands. I, 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 f I kind of feel like online play, you know, things like ping, um, the fact that you were at work all day and uh, are playing a game or you're at school or whatever can kind of make the results not quite that consistent. It's not that relevant, but it's kind of what we have at the moment. Um, there are other events. There's um, Cape, There were Cape, was Cape Town Masters last year where there was a 40,000 rand on offer for the winner, which was BVD. And uh, there's, there's a couple of other lands. Um, there was a, I mean, if we take it away from CSGO, we take it to Dota. There was the Sturkinical Cinema um experience thing i don't know what it was called but uh, it was masters in a cinema basically dota 2 um in terms of other events there were things like vodacom gamers fest and eve Tech champions league which were both great events had pretty um proportionally big price pools considering the the shortness of the online play section versus the land section but again you you, you know not that much money versus the one million rand one million rand you know that uh the telcom offer so with the increasing professionalism of MGOs locally, following as overseas MGOs are becoming increasingly professional, SAE Sports is becoming a business. And uh, I'd encourage you to look at uh, the numbers here through the eyes of a business. Don't look at them as you who maybe are in school and don't earn an income and therefore maybe you know the amounts of money might sound like a lot. Think of it uh, through the eyes of a businessman. Am I going to get a return on my investment? Think of it as a workman. If I work for a year, will I get a return on my effort? Is Telcom Masters a viable business proposition as a player or as an MGO owner? I'm using freely available information from Telcom's website and uh, looking at other gaming websites that have reported on it about um, you know how much money is actually on offer here. Um, so, I mean, you can find it. I can post it in the comments uh, section if you really want to know. I just put it all in a spreadsheet. Very easy to do. Um, I encourage you, make your own conclusions from this information. I will offer my opinion. This is my YouTube channel. I'm here to offer my opinion. But remember, that is my opinion alone. Um, I'm not coming in with an agenda or a, um, you know, of course, I have my own opinions about it, but I'm not trying to steer you either way. Um, of course, at some point in the video, I, I may offer my unsolicited opinion, but of course, it is solicited because you're watching. You decide for yourself whether it makes sense or not as a business proposition considering the returns or remuneration on offer. So let's go through the prize earnings. Bravado, um, 
they won a total of 240,000 Rand through Masters last year. They won 200,000 Rand. Um, this is again CSGO. I'm not talking about Dota just yet. They won 200,000 Rand in CSGO at uh, the Rage Masters final. Um, that's the Johannesburg Rage. And at Cape Town Rage, through winning that, they won 40,000. So they went maximum there 240,000 Rand. Plenty of money. So if you divide that by five people, not taking into account the fact that they have a manager, um, they have, um, who's also the MGO owner, of course, and that the MGO has operational costs, of course. Um, not taking into account TC, who's, their, who's their, um, their coach. Not taking into account any other support staff or anything like that. If you just solely divide 240,000 Rand by five players, it's 48,000 Rand for a year's worth of ping and bravado. So that's a lot of matches in, in DGL. And of course, DGL do force you, sorry, to prioritize their matches above all else, um, which I guess they, they have the right to because they, they're giving out the most money, of course. Um, 48,000 Rand for a year's worth of work. Maybe it makes sense to you. To me, it doesn't. Um, as a, you know, m a middle class upper income earner sort of person, that's just a couple months salary for me. It's not, or maybe not even. It's, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be vague here because I don't want to. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's not that much money for me as somebody who works all day um, in a professional career. But um, does that make you a professional esports player? Maybe that's a separate topic. But uh, forty-eight thousand rand, I don't know. And that's the most that somebody could earn. If we go to the bottom end of the scale, we got guys like VNR with, um, well. 6,000 Rand a player through 30,000 Rand total prize earnings. Same for XTC. In the middle of the table, you've got guys like DC and uh, Aperture and F3, which vary between 60,000 and 45,000 for um, the total earnings. You could earn as much as 12,000 Rand a player or as little as 9,000 Rand per player if you're uh, an F3 player. But you look at that and go, well, DC are older guys. They're all in professional careers. They're good earners. Um, 12,000 Rand is just a little bit of icing on the cake, but it definitely does not pay the bills, especially when you have family and kids, as a lot of those guys do. Um, if you look at the Dota 2 side and include that, I mean, their WRG were the most successful team for having um, won 200,000 Rand at the, the Johannesburg uh, Rage Masters final and uh, having won 20,000 Rand at the Cape Town uh, Masters finals. They went in the final, I don't think. Well, I don't know anything about Dota, so who knows? But um, it is here somewhere in the spreadsheet, but it is rather complicated. So I'm just going to pretend that that information doesn't exist because I want to continue with my video. They had 220,000 Rand uh, in total, so that's 44,000 Rand per player, which is, a, which is a nice chunk of money if you're a student or you're studying or you've got nothing else going on. That's pretty cool. But again, for a year's worth of online work, you decide. So, I mean, the grand total you as an MGO could have made the, the maximum anybody made was uh, bravado 370,000 rand in isolation a big chunk of money but consider 10 10 players mgo owner coaches support staff social media people whatever i mean i think BV, in bvd's case um sent does a lot of that stuff himself um he's one of the very hands-on mgo owners and power to him reduces operational costs but if you're vnr or xtc you only made 60,000 rand across 10 people and probably coaches I don't know about that. So let's look at the expenses for a LAN event. Um, I know Cape Town Rage, um, from what I've heard through the grapevine, is that it was fully fully paid um, in terms of travel costs by the um, by Telcom itself. And uh, that was also the case with the Sturkinikor Cinema um, Dota 2 Masters tournament. Um, however, from also from what I've heard from various sources, um, it wasn't paid fully at... Um, travel expenses weren't paid fully at... Um, Rage at Johannesburg. Um, I've heard speculation on numbers. I believe it to be somewhere between. I mean, it's a very wide range, but between between say fifteen thousand and thirty thousand rand, it's quite a quite a range. But not really. Is it adequate? Well, let's let's look at what it actually costs. So I looked at what a city lodge room in Randburg costs. City lodge is the crappiest possible place that you could sleep. You probably will get eaten by um, cockroaches or bed bugs or something like that, and be dead in the morning. Maybe I don't know. I mean, it's not the nicest place to stay, but it's it'll do, I guess. 630 Rand a night. You're going to have to stay for four nights, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then we've got, uh, let's let's speculate that it's only three people coming up for, for Rage in your, in your CSGO team. Um, the other two are, um, I mean, they're going to be based in, you know, Joburg or Pretoria or somewhere like that. And uh, so let's say it's three. So that's 2,520 Rand for four nights times by three, 7,560. 
uh, let's assume the same for your Dota team. So that's 15,120 uh, in total. But of course, you know, if all of your players have to say that's over 25,000 Rand, and again, remember you as an MG owner, MGO owner, I'm assuming that you are an MGO owner, maybe need somewhere to stay. Um, the other side of it, sorry, somebody outside is making a bit of a noise. I keep looking. Apologies. Anyway, hashtag complex life. And, uh, you know, complicated or complexes. Anyway, so, I mean, remember there's girlfriends, there's um, support staff, there's managers, there's uh, there's coaches, there's all sorts of people that need a place to stay. So even 25,000 rand is the worst case is way off base. You're going to stay in some place better than the city lodge. So you're probably looking at 40 grand's worth of uh, just hotels. So that's more than your budget was in the first place in total. Um, then we've also got flights. It's about 820 bucks for a flight from Cape Town to Lanseria. And we're looking at about 760 bucks from Lanseria to Cape Town. That's best case scenario in off peak season, which it really wasn't in October because um, that's sort of um, prime tourist season. So the prices are a little higher usually. Um, and of course, depending on the time of day, um, if you're on the popular flight times, it can be as much as 2000 Rand for flight. So this is again pie in the sky. Let's say it's three people flying times by two so six people three people in either team that gives you a total of 9,492 rand 36 which again is complete crap because um, there's going to be a lot more people that than that it's more likely to be 20k plus if you include um, it's but again using the numbers I've I've used it totals 24,612.36 which is still a large chunk of that budget what about food food is going to probably set you back maybe 15 to 20k if not more over the course of the weekend if we look at the worst case possible scenario of spending 100 rand per meal, which basically means it's a burger and chips and you're going to get diabetes or um, high blood pressure or cholesterol from it and die before the final. Um, <laughs> you know, if you, if you look at that 100 rand sort of thing per meal and that somehow at the city lodge that they, they serve something edible for breakfast, which I'm pretty sure they don't, um, that may set you back 8,000 rand per team for, for the weekend. Um, and then what, how that's just not realistic i mean you're going to need coffee you're going to need energy drinks snacks whatever to make you comfortable because of course at masters if you're not accommodated there's no green room there's nowhere to to chill or or get some quiet or you know have a you know read or whatever or sleep there is no place to do that it's a busy trade show and everything is expensive so that is absolutely pie in the sky um you know there's going to be ubers there's going to be um taxis it's it's going to be difficult a really big sort of thing to get everybody where they need to be and um that's gonna that's gonna cause you some issues. So ooh, just gotta turn the phone off there. Client trying to get hold of me most desperately. But anyway, um it seems like my neighbors and my, my clients don't want me to make this video. Do they work for telecom? Who knows? However, um if if we get back to this, I mean really you're gonna be in for fifty K if you want to treat your team like humans, and that's fifty K times two, so a hundred K. So if you look at somebody like Carbon, for instance, who only made 100K and then maybe got a little bit of, uh, you know, they made 140K in total if you include Dota 2. But, um, and then you include that little bit of travel costs um, and the, you got to look at it and go, well, they didn't really make any money. Probably they lost money. In fact, I'd say it's very likely that uh, Spoof, who now plays for XD, has pro probably dug a huge hole of bottomless debt for himself um, from running an MGO. So... If we look at uh, the other issues, which is the lack of sponsorship interest and investment, um, Carbon again being a prime example, the second best CSGO team consistently throughout the year and actually winning an event, I think it was Vodacom Gamers Fest, they won. Um, they never found a sponsor. There's no individual endorsement contracts in esports. There's no no case of um, they ever, yeah, well, not ever, but I mean, there's no case of, you know, like a Nike sponsoring Sonic. It's not yet. It's too early in, in the cycle for us at the moment. I mean, there are, of course, um, international players. Like, uh, I think the only example I can think of is Scream. There's uh, um, Final Mouse, um, Scream 1 edition or whatever. That's that's an endorsement deal. And there's also Summit 1G who's sponsored by Audio Technica. Yeah, microphones, headphones. Uh, and he's also sponsored by Corsair. And, of course, he burns himself to death uh, in a funny video um, made by Eagle from South Africa about... Uh, you know, when he, when he was in a big tournament, he's a laughing stock and he's sponsored, but in South Africa, well, that's not going to be the case just yet. I think it is a possibility for the future, but right now you don't have alternate means of income as a player. You'd need to become a Twitch partner, say, if you wanted to stream. So that means doing very regular broadcasts, which interrupts practice and not having anything else to do, such as homework or work. And of course, there's the internet bandwidth issue in South Africa, which is very difficult to overcome. 
you can't be a full-time streamer really just yet in South Africa. Maybe there are guys that do it and power to them, but right now that's not viable for players. It's a bit of fun, it's a bit of exposure, but it's not getting you any money really. Um, as an MGO owner, how are you going to get more money in? I mean, you can punt products on your social media for your sponsors, but this is the sponsors you already have. Are you going to um, attract non-computer gaming sponsors? Well, at this stage, not really. We don't have guys sponsored by Red Bull or Coca-Cola or anybody like that just yet. There aren't a lot of options for, for exposing your brand as well because, well, right now, and this is current current um, situation, the broadcast side for Telcom DGL Masters is not in place before the start of the season. The season started a week ago. Nothing has been broadcast and there have seemingly are no plans. I'm a caster. I casted their finals for them last year. They haven't spoken to me and other guys that I've spoken to who are also casters have not been approached either. So there just doesn't seem to be a plan. That's pretty unacceptable for sponsors. Where's the possibility for exposure if there's no broadcast? Again, Telcom, unacceptable. You have a fan base that you've built through doing really good work for the last few few years. And again, I applaud you for the, the pioneering work you've done to build esports in South Africa. But you're not broadcasting it. So the sponsors are getting no value and any potential sponsors you may be looking at are going, well, wait, hang on, 1 million rand prize pool. That's what they say. But where can I watch it? They can't. It's, it just boggles the mind. I don't understand it. I haven't been asked to cast, therefore I don't cast. Would I cast for, for Telcom? Maybe, but I, I would take money to cast. Why would I take money? Because they have money. They're a huge organization. This is not a charity. Um, I, I casted for free a lot last year. I casted more than anyone else along with uh, Burning Red, my, my co-caster. Um, we worked our asses off, and for us, the financial return was really not there. It was nice. I could buy some guitars. You know, cool. I like, I like guitars. X equals guitar. That's what we call guitars as, as guitarists quite often. Origin story confirmed X equals X streams. I play guitar. Um, I couldn't even afford that one guitar over there with what I got paid last year. I mean, that's it's a fairly expensive guitar, but no. Um, maybe help me buy it, but uh, it's not a viable career option for me now either. I have to work full time. That's, that's how it has to be. Um, I'm not going to cast for free for Telcom or anyone else. That's just how it's going to be. Um, However, they haven't even given me the opportunity for me to tell them that because they haven't spoken to us. Um, if they're yeah, courting some entry-level guys who haven't casted before or whatever. Okay, but um, again, nothing is being broadcast. Where's this value for sponsors here? Tying into this, no bravado in, in um, Masters this year really diminishes the online need stage of the competition and therefore would diminish sponsorship interest because they are the most lauded, the most decorated the most um, storied team in Counter-Strike and Dota in, in South Africa, and they're not there. Obviously, the wild card um, for the um, LAN finals does allow them to get back into the competition. If you excuse me. And it does allow them the opportunity to play in the LAN and give some legitimacy to the lands as a best of the best competition. But what about the rest of it? It doesn't really have, I mean, online versus land online is already a diminished sort of spectacle because it's online. And now where's the legis legitimacy that Bravado would add to it? They're not there. So wh why watch the online? Of course you can't because it's not broadcast. So we're coming full circle here, but it's not an ideal situation. I don't know how things worked behind the scenes there, whether it was, um, you know, I'm sure it was Bravado's decision to leave and maybe the financial implications of the whole thing might have been part of that. Who knows? That's despite them being the highest earners in the competition across both games. Again, speculation. But the question here is, is the, is the uh, competition diminished by it? And I'd say yes, and that would uh, diminish sponsorship interest potentially as well. That's not Bravado's fault. Again, I'm not blaming them for anything yeah they've made a decision that's good for them and power to them but the competition as a whole i mean maybe something convoluted was was invented so that they could come back in i don't know if that was djl going oh crap we're not going to have bravado we've got to figure out some way that, that we can they can have their cake and eat it and so can we i don't know we will we'll never know maybe i'll do a video on that at some point if some more information comes to light or i'll just speculate wildly as i am now who knows but um, the difficulty is, again, the, the, the actual tournament itself right now, it's not being broadcast. How are sponsors getting exposure? And the biggest name in it is not there. That hurts it a lot. If we look at the numbers game again, I mean, you can go rewind. This is, well, not rewind, just drag the bar back and, and go and look at what I said before. 
listen to the numbers that are involved, make your own conclusions. Is it worthwhile as a player or as an MGO owner to be in Masters from a financial point of view? Again, purely financial point of view and business hat on. Money earner hat on. That's what I'm saying. I have a hat. I use hat uh, metaphors, of course. Um, make your own conclusion. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, let me know what, what your thoughts are on the actual money side of, of Masters. And of course, the other thing to, to look out for is Again, as I said, Telcom have built the demand. They have pioneered and paved the way for other people. And other big companies guaranteed are coming in this year. I'm sure other big telecoms companies will, will get involved and do their own sort of things. I'm sure that there will be more big money sponsorship. And there will probably be guys who want to offer more money than Telcom. And again, wild speculation here. But um, there is every chance that money will only go up and up. And, and Telcom were the pioneers in the stage, in, in the space. But right now, is it worth it? Leave a comment, leave a like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Axe out.